January 6th, the facts. We one of the one of the things that we have learned as a consequence of the January 6th commission is the depth and breadth of this conspiracy to take down a democracy in the United States and replace it with an autocratic form of government with with uh, you know one man rule with Donald Trump as dictator and how close we came to that I mean, it was it was five or six Republicans in various states uh, Brad Raffsenperger in Georgia uh, we had a there was a, a county uh, a county commissioner, as I recall, uh, it was his position in Michigan, in uh, in one of the counties around around Detroit. Um, there was uh, a couple of people in Arizona, and the Speaker of the House in Arizona, Rusty Bowers. Uh, just a, a handful of Republicans who stood up to Donald Trump and prevented him from becoming America's first official dictator, which is pretty breathtaking when you think about it. Timothy Snyder, uh, over the holiday weekend summarized January 6th, the facts. And I, you know, I thought it was just a, a great summary and wanted to share with you, um, you know, his summary of what we have learned. I, I think he's done a really good job of this. You can, you can find his stuff, his writings over at Snyder, S-N-Y-D-E-R dot Substack dot com. First of all, one of the things that we've learned is that Donald Trump knew well before the November 3rd election that he was going to lose that election. All the polling was showing that. Uh, the internal polling was showing that, the Republican Party polling was showing that, and his own campaign polling was showing that he was going to lose. So he knew that he was going to lose, which is why he started saying in public leading up to the, this is even before the election, that if he lost, it would be because of fraud, that that would be the only way he could lose. In other words, he was planning this thing. Now, one of the things Tim Snyder doesn't mention, and that uh, to the best of my knowledge is not in the January 6th report, was that this was the second time he had done this. In 2016, Roger Stone put together a website and trademarked Stop the Steal and had a website, StopTheSteal.com, as I recall, and they were planning when Hillary Clinton won the election on claiming that she had won the election by stealing it. And Trump was going to set him up himself up as, as you know, president in exile, and it was going to be a a whole, you know, great new fundraising scam and et cetera. And they didn't pull the trigger on this thing because Clinton didn't win. So that was number one. Number two, on the, on the election day, now keep in mind, the election wasn't called for several days because all the votes take time to count in many states. But on election day itself, Trump, again, knowing he was going to lose, declared victory which is just like wrong. I mean, you don't do that, right? Uh, then in November, uh, throughout the month of November, throughout the month of December, and throughout the month of January, and, and uh, he started laying down, leading up to January 6th, Trump started making specific claims about election fraud. Oh, it was, it was Ruby down in Georgia, and you know, et cetera, like this. When he discovered that his campaign advisors, the people, his campaign officials, even the members of his cabinet knew that he had lost fair and square, he started promoting people like Rudy Giuliani, who would lie for him in public. He made several deliberate efforts to overturn the election results and thus American democracy. In states that he lost, he had pressured uh, Republican officials to, to change the election results and alter the outcome of the election. When Bill Barr and the Department of Justice investigated Trump's claims of fraud, they came back and said there's no evidence whatsoever. So Trump tried to use his power via via Jeffrey Clark to, he wanted Jeffrey Clark to write letters to state Republican officials saying, you know, looks like you've got fraud in your state. Maybe you shouldn't uh, certify the election. He, he, excuse me, he oversaw an effort to create a fake, a slate of fake electors. Then, of course, he tried to get Mike Pence murdered. And, you know, when Pence wouldn't go along with this scheme, when the Capitol was under attack, he actually called for more violence in a tweet halfway through that. And uh, a bunch of Republicans sought pardons. You're listening to the Tom Hartman program. Call 202 808 9925. Those pardons pretty much uh, demonstrating that they knew that what they were doing was a crime.